I was told I can go to the podium so you can get a better shot at me. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you for the generous introduction. Uh, and I should say some of my best friends are prosecutors, too. Uh, or at least were until the book came out. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, I had an experience yesterday that was actually quite moving. Uh, when I went to testify before the House Subcommittee on Crime, uh, I was getting out of my taxi in front of the Rayburn office building, and the taxi right in back of mine, somebody jumps out, and it was a prosecutor from the Department of Justice who had spent some time in Boston prosecuting an absolutely absurd case. I thought it was an absurd case of my client. And um, the prosecutor got out of the taxi, uh, came over to me, said, you know, I, I read your book, and uh, you were very fair uh, in how you described the case. So that was the, the best compliment I've gotten about the book so far, that one of the prosecutors in the book who lost the case, I'm happy to say, so is my client, uh, told me that he thought that I was fair uh, to the department in that case. I'm sure that won't be true with all the uh, cases, but it was a, it was a good start. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm particularly pleased to be here at Cato because it was 11 years ago that I was here with Alan Charles Kors where we launched the Shadow University, the betrayal of liberty on America's campuses. And the uh, Shadow University, which is still in print, I'm happy to say, turned out to be uh, a kind of a, a, a small classic. Uh, it resulted in the launch of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, uh, which uh, specializes in protecting free speech and academic freedom and due process on uh, college campuses. Now, it's not a coincidence that um, my outline for the Shadow University uh, and my outline for what turns out to be three felonies a day were done at about the same time, the mid-1980s. And the reason I started to uh, focus on these two problems, the campus speech codes and the harassment codes, and also the, 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 at, the point, at that point, nascent, the beginning of the uh, federal uh, practice of prosecuting people under statutes that nobody could uh, fairly understand uh, and for committing crimes that even a sophisticated lawyer would look at the conduct, look at the statute, look at the indictment and wonder what it was that the defendant did that was criminal. That's a very bad sign for a criminal justice system when experienced lawyers can't tell you why it's a crime that you know, somebody's been indicted for conduct, you can't figure out why. So, um, <clears throat> But it's no coincidence, because vagueness is really the enemy of liberty. It allows deans, prosecutors, it allows them to do whatever they want to whomever they want. Um, and as long as there's nothing to stop them, then this is just a steamroller. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the... Um, the speech codes on the campus and the statutes that I'm talking about uh, are um, uh, really uh, uh, the quintessential elements of this vagueness due process problem. Vagueness is a due process problem. If you are prosecuted for doing something where you had no reasonable notice it was a crime, that is a violation of a due process. Um, and I'm going to just read you a couple of sentences. This is from... Uh, taking us back 11 years. This is from uh, the Shadow University, and it's about some of the excerpts from some of the speech codes on campuses. And uh, I'll just read you four sentences here. Sometimes the policies say it all. In New England, quote, harassment, close quote, <clears throat> has included within recent times jokes and ways of telling stories, quote, experienced by others as harassing. That's Bowdoin College quote, verbal behavior that produces feelings of impotence, anger, and disenfranchisement, whether intentional or unintentional, Brown University. <clears throat> Speech that causes loss of self-esteem or a vague sense of danger, Colby College, or even, quote, inappropriately directed laughter, inconsiderate jokes, and stereotyping, University of Connecticut. 
anyway, I don't have to, I think, read any more for you to get the picture. You can be thrown out of college, and students are indeed thrown out of college all the time, for that kind of behavior based on those kinds of codes. Of course, what it means is the dean can get rid of anybody that the dean wants to get rid of, because we all, don't we tell, in a, inappropriately directed humor, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so, so that problem came up in the mid-1980s, and uh, as I said, on the uh, federal uh, criminal side, I noticed the, the same vagueness, the, the same you know, ease with which somebody who for some reason came within a prosecutor's sights uh, could be uh, indicted and convicted uh, and sentenced. And that's because judges tend uh, far more than they should to kind of go along with this. Oh, we all understand what this means, don't we? Well, you know, no, Your Honor. Uh, some of us don't. We actually uh, pay attention to the English language, and we don't understand this gibberish. Um, so uh, by 1990, I had the book outlined. It took me all this time to get around to, to writing it because um, <clears throat> I've been practicing law a while I've been trying to write, and that's, that, that's a bit of a burden. Um, we don't get, we lawyers don't get sabbaticals. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and I have to say, I had a tremendous amount of encouragement to finish this book, because it was quite a chore. It took me almost five years by uh, Tim Lynch uh, and by David Bowes here at, at Cato. Um, they thought that it was an essential uh, undertaking. And every time I started to lag a little, uh, they, would, they would give me a little boost. Um, they're terrific pests, I have to say, really uh, practiced. Um, and um, let me explain for a moment the title, Three Felonies a Day. The, it's uh, slightly sarcastic, maybe slightly humorous, uh, but the notion is this. An average busy professional in this country gets up in the morning, you know, gets the kids off the school, goes to work, uses the telephone, there we go, federal offense, uses the telephone or email, uh, has meetings, uh, works on a prospectus or a bank loan or whatever, uh, goes home, uh, puts the kids to bed as dinner, uh, reads the newspaper, uh, and uh, goes to sleep and has no idea that in the course of that day, uh, he or she has very likely committed three felonies, uh, three felonies that some ambitious uh, creative prosecutor uh, can pick out of that day, day's activities uh, and put into an indictment if the feds so, so want. And um, that's, as I said, a slight exaggeration, but really not much. Uh, the, um, <clears throat> I want to also point out the phenomenon that I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about federalism. Do I personally believe the federal government has usurped areas that should remain uh, with the states? I do, and I also think we're much better off leaving them to the states because the states actually do a better job in a lot of these kinds of criminal areas. But I'm not talking about federalism. I'm also not talking about another problem over criminalization, which I know that Cato is very active in dealing with right now. There are so many crimes on the books, uh, the explosion of uh, criminal statutes. I think that's a huge problem. But when you at least can understand them, then you at least have a leg up, because if you, you know, you can navigate a day, if you understand what the law says, you can presumably navigate a day without becoming a criminal. But when the statutes are vague, you're helpless. You're totally at the mercy of the government, because nobody can figure out. Even if you wanted to be a slave, you couldn't figure out how to be a slave, because you, didn't, you don't know what you should refrain from doing. So uh, it, this is a, a, a problem separate from, although somewhat related to, um, the others. Now, um, <clears throat> Alan Dershowitz wrote a, um, wrote a forward to the book. And uh, <clears throat> he was completely free, of course, to write what he wanted, some of his theories of how to solve this problem I actually don't agree with. 
um, uh, and some I do, 